Hello YouTube, today's video will be taking a look at the lip sync tool provided with the MBLAB character study project. I'm going to open up the voice test map which has everything required to follow this tutorial. It is here and you should see something like this when you open it up. I'm going to press G to hide all this other stuff. I'm going to just click on the lip sync tool. It's an actor. And, uh, there is one caveat to using the lip sync tool, you have to be in game mode to run the lip sync. So you can press F8 on your keyboard to eject and you can start accessing you know, your various actors. The lip sync tool has these options and we will fill that up in the editor mode. Now to do lip sync we obviously need an audio file, so I have to test audio here. I created cues also of them. I use the audio cues to play the audio later on. Now you can also use the audio cues to assign a master or that is you can change the sound class which is outputting the audio so that's why I use the cue. Now if you open up the level blueprint you will see a reference to this audio data table and this stores all of the lip sync data. Uh, if you want to add more lip sync data, all you have to do is click on the plus, give it a name, say, and uh, the queue. I'm going to show you how to lip sync this audio, so I'm going to fill that up over here. And the lip sync data is what's going to be generated by this tool. We will be later referencing this go name to play the audio over here. So let's keep this ready. Let's type in audio 3, compile. We're going to play the audio from this along with the lips and data which is going to be pasted here, which will be filled up over here once you click on lip sync. Now, this option only works in game mode, so you have to play to get it running. I'm just going to fill this and this. And I'm gonna add a reference to this character in order to test it later on. The offset time allows you the, to offset the lip sync by a few seconds, you know, either a delay or a head. And I'll show you how that works also. So let's play. F8, project. So in order to lip sync, we have three options. We have the Papa Guy, which was already covered, we have Rhubarb, and we have Pocket Spins. Now Papagayo is manual lip sync so the output from Papagayo is pasted here and you get lip sync to import it and you get the lip sync data over here but for pocket sphinx and rhubarb it's totally automatic so let's check out rhubarb first rhubarb has 7 phonons pocket sphinx has sorry pocket sphinx has 40 phonons now when I hit the lip sync it says it started and it's done and you can see it's filled up 28 uh, struts with lip sync data for each second of the audio clip. Now we have this other option here called the add default face at end. Now when you run the lip sync, it uh, by default doesn't add any face at the end once lip sync is done. So if you want to reset the face back to your default face, you can check that. Let me check that in lip sync again. Start. And done. You can see it has one extra face shape. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it into our data table. So we have audio 3 and audio 3 over here. And I possess again and I press Z. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So that was the audio which you were lip sync. Now this seems a little, you know, like a lot of work if you have to just keep testing. So I have the test option as well. So you can just hit test. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. But you, in order to test, you have to set up the reference over here for a character which you want to test or characters. So let's try another audio clip. And this time I'm going to lip sync with pocket sphinx. And it's done. I'm gonna add the queue here because the queue is what the audio is going 
where the audio is going to play from. So let's test that. They'll see you now, Lieutenant. So that's done as well. Uh, let's see what happens if we offset it by 3.3 seconds. So I guess this should add a delay. They'll see you now, Lieutenant. Okay, yeah, so let's go back again. It's from like the delay. Let's make it be a little sooner than the actual audio. They'll see you now, Lieutenant. Oh, wow, that's good. So you could again copy this data, add a new row to your data table with the audio, and then save it. So why I tell you to save it is because as soon as you stop the game, everything disappears. So it's all gone. So while you're still in play mode, copy the lip sync data and save it in your data table. Uh, going back to this lip sync tool, uh, there's this phonetic option also. The phonetic option is used by Rubab, and Rubab has two options for lip sync. It can either detect English or it can detect based on the uh, actual phonetic sound of the phonemes. So that should work with other languages as well. Rubab and another thing I'd like to mention in this video before I end it is by by default you would want most of your audio clips to be mono for voices because it doesn't make sense to be using stereo audio clips for voices and uh, these two tools Rubab and Pocket Sphinx they require mono input again so what happens is when you hit lip sync uh, the audio clip is extracted and it is pasted in a temporary folder which it creates besides your content folder of your project and the audio clip is within the same directory structure so game assets audio and you can see it follows the same directory structure now the original audio is exported and it's converted to mono with the underscore c so let's say you want to use a mono audio track later instead of using the stereo audio track you can always import the mono audio track and replace all your references or you can always right click and re-import with a new file so this is how you convert also the stereo tracks to mono and by default all these tracks have 16,000 kilohertz rate of encoding in a single mono channel sometimes with another rate the lip sync has some issues i don't know why but uh, i'm looking into that you might notice that the, mouth, the audio plays but the mouth doesn't move or the mouth moves and the audio doesn't play and if you're encountering an issue like that you could use the exported audio which is converted within the temp folder and if you don't need any of those you could just delete that so that's all there is to the lip sync. I think I've covered everything. Three options Papagayo is manual. You use Papagayo for manually lip syncing with Papagayo and you paste in the output of Papagayo here and you hit lip sync. Again, in game mode to do the conversion, save your output into your data table, give it a row name and reference it later in game to play the lip sync with your character and your character needs to be able to you know understand the input from lip, the lip sync tool and that is done in this component here called the face animal component which I'll be explaining in another video but you could take a look at it anyways it has a lot of functions and you could probably re-implement this for your own characters or you could use this if you're using manual Bastini characters. Then we have this other uh, actor over here called the face and voice manager. It has to be there in all your levels or single instance if this has to be there because all your characters reference this face and voice manager in order to get the face shapes. So I've given a name for all the face morph targets, right? So we have all our phonemes set up from A to Z and you can open up the morphs and see how all the morphs 
uh, map with different values for each phone of, or each type of face, say for pain, lazy, angry, crying, whatever. And you can maintain, you know, another set of faces for each type of character you have. So this is fine be that you can add as many characters you want by editing this enum here. Open up the face and voice manager. To see how that works. So yeah. Character type enum, which is somewhere in this project. This is like a common blueprints enums. Uh, yeah, 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 the character types. So say you have Genesis characters from the AZ Studio or iClone characters, you can you can fill this up and create a mapping for all those characters for their phone numbers or for you know the various faces you want to support. And you can drive the logic using the lip sync. Now the lip sync tool itself is also very simple. It has a couple of functions for mapping the output of rhubarb or the output of pop pocket sphinx to the phonemes which I created in the face and voice manager. So you can see how that works. It's a very simple blueprint. And you'll understand that it, uh, it actually starts the external tool, right? It starts pocket sphinx and rhubarb. So that's why you need to be in game mode because Unreal doesn't allow you to start other applications while you're still in editor mode. That's why you have to get into game mode to be able to use the voice and lip sync tool. Now, the lip sync tool itself is only used for development, so you don't package it with your game. Because if you package it with your game, you'll have to package these EXEs as well. And you'll have to go over the licenses of those EXEs. Because I think, I think some of them have a GPL license, I'm not sure how that works. But as long as it's all separate and you're just using it for creating lip sync for your game, I think you're good to go. Now, uh, I, did, I did mention that one of these files have a GPL license and that is only socks, which is over here. Well, socks is used for converting your files from mono to that is from stereo to mono. So if you can have a if you do have another replacement for this tool, let me know. Then you can avoid the GPL license altogether. So that's all there is to lip sync with the MVLab character study project. Hope you found this useful. Please do like and subscribe.